Look, uh, retakes and salutations, you beautiful individuals. It is League Unlock, you best believe. We've returned Eric and Mark here with you for what was definitely a bit of a bizarre adventure over the weekend. And yes, we're talking about JoJo. JoJo Pyun and Cloud9. Easy to grab the headline stealer and see Jensen, deathless. JoJo Pyun does not get a single kill. If I tell you those two stats alone, you can probably guess how the series played out. There's not a lot of guesswork when you get told stats like that, knowing the importance that that matchup was going to play between these two teams. Yes, it plays out predictably so, knowing that it is the full fly quest domination of Cloud9. It is the Cloud9 dismantling, almost false start is exactly how I'm going to put it out. From this team compared to what we have seen in previous weeks yes highlighted by that mid lane mastery from jensen on fly quest really putting out uh, a lesson for the youngster jojo pion to learn from and obviously it goes a little deeper than that i think there's two main points to take from this series number one is well we saw cloud nine or we saw fly quest put so much attention to jojo didn't matter if he was in the mid lane or in a side lane they were sending Pretty much everybody but Masu his way to disrupt him, and Cloud9 didn't have, have an answer for that. Didn't respond on the other side of the map. Didn't have, really it felt like a win condition outside of Jojo making some kind of play because even when fights were rolling around, he might try a miraculous Yone engage, get caught out immediately and die, and that, that was it. They said, all right, we'll wait till he respawns and his cooldown's up. They had, they had no other weapons. And one of the best examples of that is looking at a player like Bwipo in the top side for FlyQuest and the role that he played in identifying that Jojo Pian is going to be one of these big factors in a lot of these team fights, and especially the way the series played out, pick and ban on a champion like Talia, who loves to be far away from the team, make a big journey on in, make that arrival and change the way that the shape of the team fight plays out instantly identifying that and knowing where to be and where at the right time to get that big time Renekton stun giga galaxy brain from your boy Bwipo making sure that that one's coming through and there was no answer from Jojo Pian or the rest of Cloud9 to any of these preparations any of these identifications on the side of FlyQuest on how they were going to put behind someone like Jojo Pian there is something to be said about what was prepared against him but what the, the reaction, the action from Mr. Jojo Pion and what we were getting from him in Cloud9 was not up to the task whatsoever. And this series even started, Berserker and Vulcan are getting some 2v2 kills. Cloud9's getting an early lead. Doesn't turn into any Drake advantage. Doesn't turn into other advantages around the map. And that just led to what was the biggest glaring gap in this series. And that was team fighting. You could see it didn't matter if it was Busio with a hook engage, Inspired going deep with the Vi, or Bwipo on a Gragas. Everyone on FlyQuest was on the exact same page, down to the pixel perfect frame. We're following up and layering CC. Whereas Cloud9, it felt like they weren't even on the same page of when to engage or disengage. And, and I think this is one of the ones where I'm coming out so positive for FlyQuest. There is a lot of negative still with the reaction for Cloud9. There's room for them to build back up into a more neutral, positive area, sure, before we get that finals potentially rematch between these two teams. But looking at FlyQuest, as you laid out how all these things went right, it wasn't just the Bwipo and Inspired show, even if they were, of course, fantastic that we can talk about. Jensen, the mastery in the mid lane and the bottom lane's importance, those hooks from Busio, Masu being there with the damage and really, I think, stepping up and out leveling what we were getting from someone like Berserker on the other side of the rift. These are fantastic signs from FlyQuest. Yeah, and, you know, still seeing some Senna out of Masu. The now on hit Varus is finally a champion. You can see mechanics for an AD carry pop off because... Obviously, the APM is like the highest in the game when you're playing uh, that on hit Varus. But it's this series in particular really makes you wonder how inspired and Whippo did not have a team last year. Number one, okay, individually, they're both fantastic, but what they bring communication wise and in terms of in game leadership, these team fights that FlyQuest were just 
not just winning, but dismantling Cloud9. If you listen to the comps for FlyQuest, these are two of the most vocal players that we have in the entire LCS. I think there's a couple of factors that played into it. One, when you're looking at Whippo specifically, maybe not the strongest of years off of Team Liquid heading into that off season that you could look at. And I think as well with both of these players, guys that know their value, they know what they bring. They know that they are not only gifted on what they're gonna bring skill-wise to the team, but the additional factors that they bring in, the type of things that make them the players that they are, that build the team environments that they are part of. That is a big factor, and I don't think that they saw uh, the, the right combinations, the right additions of, of either monetary, the right players in place, and all these type of things from the North American scene to make that commitment. Whatever combination it was for FlyQuest, they've gotten it right, and they have reaped the rewards of getting both of these two back into the LCS. Feeling very good about FlyQuest as a squad as they lock in a spot to MSI. I'm feeling very worried about whichever squad is going to lock up that second spot between Team Liquid and Cloud9, unless there's some serious level up from the C9 squad in that matchup against TL. Things were wrapping up on the LCK side of things. We had one last push chance for D+, to make us feel good about them heading into playoffs in a matchup against Hanwha Life, and we unfortunately did not get it. If I'm talking about Kingen as the standout performer across the whole series for D+, we got issues. Yeah, we got issues because it's got to be a little bit more firepower coming through for D+, especially when the other side is Hanwha Life Esports. And Hanwha Life Esports, that is on the rise as of recent, what we've been keeping track of in the LCK. As you laid out, you went into this matchup, you had hoped maybe we'll see that push from DK. Give us that chance to say, okay, there's a couple of teams we got to be careful of. Someone can make that upset run in the LCK playoffs. Right now, the way that things feel after the way that this one played out is you've got your Gen G, you've got your T1. That's kind of, if you still want to package them together, if you want to separate packages for the way that they roll, however you want to do it. Then Hanwha Life rolls up and they are a serious contender. Someone that you are actually thinking has the distance, has the firepower to push it in one of these best of scenarios. If they get their best day, they get a couple things going their way, they can take the fight to these top two teams in the LCK. That is the takeaway from this matchup against DK. And now a four game losing streak for D plus heading into playoffs, even including the Rolster Coaster. I don't think there's any team in the LCK that if you were looking at a hype meter would be more jagged up and down than what we were getting out of D plus in the regular season. Yeah, and I think really the realistic thing to look here for D-plus is understanding, well, you're going to have your Hanwha Lice, your T1s, and your Gen G. That is your expected front runners, for, you know, contesting for this LCK title. You need to get meaningful experience in games for Lucid during this playoff stretch. That's the big one for me. You can iron out a couple of more things, communication, uh, ideas, strategies with the team, whatever. But you get Lucid these games, get this experience, start building it up more for that ramp up in summer. I think that needs to be where you're adjusting your goals and sights for if you're deep plus Kia. And they need a serious level up from their bot lane because it used to be early on, at least, maybe they weren't great at laning, but they were going to have a big impact when it came to team fighting later in the game. Now you're not getting either side of that pendulum from aiming and Kellen. Yeah, and that's the problem. And I think it's both parts of that clock are mismatched. The hands aren't lining up or anything else like that type of situation ever in sync is the way things are looking in that bottom lane. You got aiming, who looks nowhere close to the peaks that he was able to hit just a short little bit ago with KT Rolster and B, the engine, that damage engine that drove him through a very successful regular season in that summer split. Not seeing that from him individually. You're looking at Kellen, and I think we're seeing a lot of, you know, regression on some certain mistakes that we have seen from him in the past in his LCK career. Not a good look in that bottom lane, and one that when we have bottom lanes operating at the power that they are gen g's the t1s and heck man right now throw in viper for han with life the way that that bottom lane's rolling you, this ain't gonna cut it from aiming yeah i mean delight is the best level support vipers had probably since mako leveled up for 2021 edg so it's been a few years since we've seen viper happy and thriving as a strong bot lane in the lck which is exactly what han was got going on now so we have the final standings. We got the six playoff squads. I feel like this is what we were expecting this to look like 
two months ago. Kind of played out. I know Kwang Gong faltered at the end, but that 2-0 against D plus was enough to secure that sixth spot. Hanma to the surprise of absolutely nobody chooses KDF in that first round matchup, and that doesn't even feel like a playoff matchup to me. <laughs> no, I mean, it's one of these ones, and, and you don't want to be disrespectful. You're on that hour, certainly that hour and a half watch timer is going to be the one. We'll You're see if one the of these games of reaches 30 minutes. Like, Yeah, that's going to be the real test from KDF. If they can push it into that territory, if they can show up and play that spoiler, because otherwise you don't see that coming through. The power that we have seen from this Honda Life team, I think even you can, you know, right now, I'm just talking about Viper, throw your boy Zeka in the mix. I think that he has certainly stepped up and we're seeing a lot more of the of the edge that he had when we were talking about World Championship Zeka. And other matchup, I mean, the last two two weeks you haven't seen much out of KT or D plus to think they're gonna be taking games off of KT. But I will say Time and time again, we have seen Showmaker level up when it comes to playoffs. He's one of these guys who the more meaningful the match is, the better he's going to play. That always came with Canyon uh, at his side. So that is my thing I want to see here in these playoffs. Of course, outside of, as I just mentioned way before, Lucid, that experience that he needs to keep building up at this type of level, this type of competition, the exposure, all these things that you, that you go and face through, need to see that from him. That's going to be the other factor. Is that the safety blanket? Is that comfort? Is that chemistry that Canyon brought to that mid lane and rised up in these big moments alongside Showmaker in the playoffs? Do we see any of that DNA in someone like Lucid? We got to do a real deep dive into the blue shell buff that's happening across the globe, especially with Rogue in the LEC. A single win to their name. They match up against G2. And all of a sudden, they're the most proactive team in the league. They're making plays across the board. Mickey's running it down a little bit. Why did they look like such a different team against G2? Because even in winter, they only had two wins, and one of them were against the eventual champions. It had to have been just, I'm betting on the flat-out factor of just fearlessness, of facing this and realizing, you know what? Don't care. We get pumped by the guys that are way out in front of us. That's what everyone's expecting, whatever. Play with nothing to lose type of situation. They get out there, they get some mistakes from your boy Mickey. That's a bit sloppy down there in the bottom lane. And heck, his partner Hansama a little bit later joins him in a couple of mistakes. He just forgot he had <laughs> teleport. That's it happens. Look, I I when even when it became the meta for ADCs to start messing around with the teleport down there, and it's been a, it's been a while since then coming through. I'm still horrific at using that teleport, so there's no way I'm going to criticize Hans about that one. This really seemed to be that it. You know, you just go into it, you approach G2 like you were going to approach anybody else, any other competition, and you took it to them. You got advantages in your hand. That's how they were able to control it through. And I think that there is something to be said about, you know, you know the, the mistakes and the sloppiness from G2. It doesn't take away every positive that you've seen from them and every dominance, sure. It is that little thorn, that little sliver you do need to pluck out of the hand. For Rogue, this is not necessarily the immediate sign that they are going to go on that type of run, but it has done enough where there is a scenario now where Rogue can get one more win and auto-qualify for the next stage of the split in the LEC. Also, the potential for a five-way tiebreaker because of that. So maybe G2 is just searching for chaos and said, you guys no. know if we lose this, there could no. be a five-way tiebreaker. Oh, okay. <laughs> no way. No way. That's the way that it played out. I mean, I can understand questioning that seeing the teleport come through. That ain't it, my man. <laughs> no. Also, with G2 losing, though, now, they're tied near the top of the standings with both Fnatic and Team Heretics, who with a giant X on the schedule, have a potential to maybe finish first in this round robin and got the longest win streak in the LEC four in a row. We got Flacket playing the Yasuo bot lane. Team Heretics might be a legit threat when these best ofs roll around. 
Oh, baby, I'm so happy to see something like this come through. This is what we've been waiting for. What we, I think a lot of people really hoped and were maybe part of the excitement with BDS, making this a little bit of a push, a little bit of a rise in the LEC, Mad Lions, Koi. You're looking for that third team. That's someone outside of the established order. El Clasicos of G2 and Fnatic to provide that rivalry, provide that fire in the LEC. Here it is right here this is the one that you're looking for baby they've got it heretics coming on through and you know what it's a little bit of the old mixed in there you got the bit of g2 flacket coming across with the yasuo back in there and you got a bit of mr old fanatic wonder and g2 wonder mixed in there as well throwing it down and showing that he still got it when you put the resources up in the top side Yankos continues to age like a fine bottle of wine. He's one of the still top three junglers in the LEC so far in this spring split. And obviously, most importantly, the main roster change alongside Trimby. Uh, Zwiru, the first week probably, he was underwhelming and people were beaming, as you do when Perks is associated with it. But he has definitely found his footing and has been incredibly stable these last four or five games for Team Heretics. And that has been so valuable when you have experimented the way that Team Heretics has. When you've gone, you know, to take these risks to say, okay, let's roll with the Yasuo bot lane. Let's go continue to pump those resources up into Wonder in the top side. See what we can get from that outlet. Having that stability, having that consistency in the mid lane, major factor for this Team Heretics squad. Love that we're calling it out and giving them a couple of roses for his performances this split because I think nobody was before. And this is certainly one of those situations where Team Heretics and Zero are do their dues at this point. Both Heretics and Vitality a little bit ago were feeling a little wobbly despite having pretty good records. It seems like Heretics are kind of finding their foot and walking a little more stable across the tightrope, whereas Her Vitality's maybe fallen off the rope and are now just climbing all five of them, maybe two feet off the ground. <laughs> They're the guy, you know, they have that balancing. They've lost the stick. They're, they're all over the place right now, man. But heretics finding their way so far. Still waiting. There's a couple of games left to, to wrap up the regular season in the LPL. But if you're paying attention to Fraud Watch, we had a, a clear sighting of it over the weekend. A full top four matchup. NIP versus BLG. And the boys from Billy Billy probably looking at that matchup saying, you guys have double-digit wins this split? Huh? Oh, no, man. This is unfortunate because, yes, this was a fraud watch. And, yes, uh, clearly caught in the flashlight is NIP as the frauds. The problem here, BLG's bringing, like, the ultra giga lumens flashlight to this fight is the situation. Everyone's so seems, a fraud to them. <laughs> it's even brighter, the shining of that light against the silhouette of NIP in this situation. Talk about Aatrox damage, man. Holy moly, this series, you had it coming in through. Been legit two shots, uh, Photic Senna, in this first game. And I know BLG's crazy ahead at this point, but it's not even a Q3 sweet spot or anything. It's like an auto Q1, and he's legit two shot the Senna. The, the, there's literally no reaction to that. You huh. are, you're clicked on at that point. There's about half of a second that goes by between that next cue or the click coming in and you're gone, so man, it's done. It is just like that. Yes, this is one of those ones, very clear uh, indication of what is our elite squad? What is that top level of the LPL? And this is, well, NIP is something else. 30 and five overall for uh, BLG as they wrap up the regular season, 15 and one. I think the last three splits now, they haven't dropped more than two series in the regular season. That's the level of dominance that they've shown. And I'm actually even more fearful of BLG as the weeks have gone by because you know what? We knew this power was there. We knew that they would be rising up to the elite, the all-star level status of the LPO. We knew that night would show up and wow, you know, you look down in the bottom lane and things have gone even better. They're getting, you know, stronger. And now Giga Bin has woken up from the slumber of the split and he is deciding to put his impact, to put his mark out there on Summoner's Rift. 
that is an incredibly intimidating and scary thought to think about for the rest of the LPL. Yeah, and I think we're going to be saying his name a whole lot more as these best ofs roll around and he gets to have uh, some fun, spicy side lane picks against some of the premier matchups in the LPL. Even though there's a few matches left, we've got our 10 teams. We know which squads are going to playoffs. It's just a matter of switching around a little bit of the seeding. And one of the squads we got to highlight and talk about, trailing only BLG in terms of win streak is LNG four in a row and they quietly climbed their way up to that sixth spot uh, we got Gala and Scout guys that were accustomed to seeing in the LPL playoffs finally leveling up these guys are even pulling out the Heimerdinger or bot lane the last oh, couple of series to do it no the darkest of technologies in the bottom lane the donger Heimerdinger stepping out of the shadows yes and LNG riding that win streak out of the shadows of the LPL into the spotlight for a lot of people and realizing that this team is back to that type of category I don't know if we're gonna slap on the label to be into that elite tier that they were able to get to last year with of course Tarzan in the jungle this type of win streak though there ain't no there ain't nothing that ain't elite about putting up those type of wins like the way that LNG has as you laid out big time performances from Scout and as of course Gala down in the bottom lane I still can't believe that this team ended up snatching Gala to add into the firepower that they had at the time and right now keeping it strong in that bottom lane mighty important as LNG pushes still deeper into that playoff tier yeah it's quite a bounce back because for so long we were talking about this team like they might not even make playoffs and now they're vying trying to climb even higher to maybe a top five finish I think they were what two and five at one point in yeah. in the OPL something like that at the start of it it was not a good look especially coming off of the questions that a lot of people had for how this roster performed without Tarzan this win streak is that great answer that, you know what? I don't care what your questions are. You're watching the LPL playoffs. We're going to be a factor. They, we've only got OMG uh, World Elite, which is the guaranteed locked in, I think, already matchup in that first round. The rest still all going to be sorted out. TES versus NIP, which sounds like could be a fun one. Basically, all that's on the line is whether or not TES can finish top three with that win and I feel like even if they lose they'll probably finish top three so not too many stakes left but we're just rearing up for playoff action to kick off in the LPL and LCK but that is it today for League Unlock Eric and Mark hanging out with you beautiful people as always thanks so much for joining us and you know we will catch you on that flippity flip